In the mid to late 90s, there was a dysfunctional family called the Griffins that lived next door to me. They were well known in our small Rhode Island hometown. They were physically, mentally, and otherwise abusive toward their three children, Meg, Christopher, and Stewie. They also committed various crimes such as murder, cheating, larceny, and other forms of assault. Here are the stories of the three children and what they endured. Meg. Meg was the oldest. She endured the most abuse. Whenever anything happened, anything negative, she'd always be the one blamed for it. This caused her to suffer from morbid, crippling depression. She had very few friends. She didn't have much luck with guys. Oh, at school, at home, everywhere. She was beaten, insulted, nearly killed, and nobody seemed to care about her or her well-being. Chris. Christopher was the second oldest and suffered from morbid class 3 obesity. He really liked strange films such as The Silence of the Lambs, and he was the only one who expressed something resembling caring for his sister Meg. He was stalked by a man named Herbert, who you may have heard of, who also stalked other children. Fortunately, he never was victimized. He and Stewie were perhaps treated better than Meg, but sadly they were still, still present in this awful family situation. Stewie. Stuart, after Meg, was the second most mistreated. He was between the ages of just born and three years old when the horrors occurred. Due to be very young, he couldn't take care of himself, so he'd be left with Brian, his family dog. Who the hell would leave their family dog to take care of a baby? He suffered from hydrocephalus, which is the reason why he has a football-shaped head. He also imagined he spoke with a Cockney accent similar to his older brother Christopher. And even though he knew about many basic things, his parents Peter and Lois said some very adult things around him in his very young age. He thought that this was normal and just the way things were. So he imagined various violent and sexual things. Things like murdering his own mother, having sex with Brian, who may I remind you is a dog, having adventures with Brian, and even imagining what his, well, non-existent due to Lois's, um, let's just say what his brothers would have acted like. The destruction of Quahog. A group of seven politicians, dubbed the Liberal Seven, had arrived in Quahog after being told about the town. But when they finally got there, they saw it as okay. But then they were told about the now infamous Griffin family. And this gave them an excuse. That would be the day when the abuses of the Griffin family would come to an end. When they arrived, Peter tried to distract them with references to 80s pop culture, music, and television with his childlike laughter, but six of the seven entered regardless and saw that Meg's corpse was being taken to be eaten by her family after she committed suicide. One of the men could barely utter to Peter Griffin, Did you do this? Thinking that he wasn't going to be put in prison, he simply said yes, being infamous for his stupidity. That was the last thing he said before Quahog was lit aflame by the Liberal Seven. Both Peter and Lois were arrested and given 50 years to life in prison. Sadly, the Liberal Seven couldn't save Megan's life. She had already died, and may I remind you, was being eaten by her family. She had committed suicide by cutting herself. It was later learned that she secretly identified as a chicken, 
but her parents would not allow her to have surgery to transition. It's believed that this is one of the many reasons why she was being abused, and that this is also the reason why we have heard of her father having fights with a giant chicken. Chris, he is still alive, who chooses to remain anonymous. His life has improved, and it is known that he has since become married. But how will he treat his own children? As for Stuart, he had his name legally changed to Arnold. He currently lives with his adoptive grandparents in the Bronx.